Welcome to Inspirational Journeys, everyone. My name is Ann Harrison, and today I have a special guest who's going to talk about one of the things that a lot of us don't like to talk about, and that's business. If you an author building, or if you're a writer building your author brand, if you're an author increasing brand awareness, or if you are a creative artist who sells your work to the to the general public, or if you provide a service like editing, which I am in the process of doing, then you're starting a business. And today, my special guest, Francie Hendrickson, is going to talk about building a business and her new book. So welcome to the show, Francie. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here. So first of all, what inspired you to start your own business? That's a great question. I always knew I was going to be an entrepreneur. I had the bug from very early on. Um, You know, growing up in my free time, I would start businesses and and, um, creating value was what I really loved. I've come to find out. Um, but my business journey actually started much sooner than I imagined it would. I thought I was going down one career path and I know you're a person of faith and God I had am. different plans. God had different plans. And I ended up starting a business basically as a means to an end. I, my career choice had failed, completely flopped, and I didn't know what I was going to do. And so I was single and had a lot of freedom and decided to run with it. So um, the career field I thought I was going into was going to be opening a high-end day spa. And I had gone and gotten an MBA to be able to do that and realized very quickly I did not love the things that were required of me in order to, to do that role. And so I pivoted quickly. I started what ended up to be a virtual assistant business. And now, seven years later, I, I am completely head over heels for it. When my, heat, when my feet hit the floor in the morning, I just, I love what I get to do. And so that led me eventually to start a second business called Founding Females, where we lead women into and through entrepreneurship. Wow. So, and I'm, and I'm taking it that that's what inspired you to write the book, right? Yes. What inspired me to write the book was the shoulders that I stood on so, so generously. I've had mentors and business colleagues who have poured into me, who, who allowed me to step on their shoulders. And I want to do that for other women. I want to pour the knowledge that, that they gave me so generously. And I want to um, help other women who are starting businesses to be able to understand, you know, not just the checklist of this is what you have to do to start a business, but why are we doing these things and how should we go about it? You know, the best way. So I had the, the book, I don't know if you've heard this before, but they say your book is written already. You know, you've got it probably in five or 10 different places. So as, as entrepreneurs, we've got you know, blog posts, we've got social media captions, we've got email marketing, we've got, you know, people email us and ask us questions and we, we respond to those. And so what I did was I compiled much of the written content that I had already produced talked about a lot of the book's concepts in one way or another, whether it was through, you know, speaking presentations, um, blog posts, like I said, and I compiled it and I organized it um, to be able to put it into a cohesive six-step process of how to start a business. Wow. Okay. Um, And you said that you started, you and your father started working with SCORE. How did you get involved with SCORE? My dad was an entrepreneur. He also went the route of working for someone else out of college and said, you know what, I think I can do this on my own. And he had a meeting with SCORE. Um, And so as I was digging in and doing my own research, he has been very much a, a big presence in my life, leading me along the path of entrepreneurship. And we had a conversation about SCORE. And so 
I, I also set up a meeting and I sat down in that meeting and um, I didn't know it at the time, but I ended up sitting across from my life mentor who seven, eight years later is still my mentor to this day. Wow. Yeah. I've got a score mentor working with me. I'm slow in the process because I've got editing projects that I'm working on, but I mean, if I have a question, it's not, he's not like, Oh, you need to get this done by this deadline or whatever. He's like, if I have a question, all I have to do is text him or call oh, him. Fantastic. Yeah. So the mentors, I cannot, and I want to have him on the podcast at some point too. I cannot recommend score enough. It's part of the small business administration, but I cannot recommend these mentors enough. And there's also webinars that you can take. Um, have you ever done any of the SCORE webinars? No, I haven't. Oh, my goodness. There is one that Ramon Ray does. And I'm going to put in a plug for this. But he does a marketing, um, your marketing mindset series. Um, the I don't remember the first one, but the last one was Stop Selling and Start Educating. Um, but you and you can go back on the score website and watch and watch the replays he's awesome and he has a lot of information and i was looking at the different webinars a friend of mine who is an author and a podcaster herself and i've given shout outs to her jen lowry um she also serves as my author coach because i'm part of her pa patreon group oh. but she was the one she told me about score before and I, and I don't think the Lord was ready. For, I, was, I wasn't ready to receive it. The Holy Spirit hadn't led me down, down that path. But now I feel like God is leading me down the path. It's a bit, it's, it, it's eye-opening to know what skills I have and what I need. And mm -hmm. I'm still working through it, even while working on these, while working on these projects. And, you know, when I'm not, when I don't have my hands full with editing or whatever, I do my writing and I go back and I work on the business stuff. And you've given me some other questions to ask myself. That's why I'm holding on to the book because I'm going to go into my business development journal and look at some of those questions and see where to put them. So um, I really encourage anyone who's starting a business, not only to read the book, but to read Francie's book, but to actually find a score mentor take the, the startup roadmap that SCORE offers and, and, and either watch some of these presentations on the website, these workshops, or register for the live events because you're going to learn a lot. And Absolutely. And I noticed, and I noticed your, your, your book is uh, um, Dream, Build, Grow. It is written primarily for women, but my question to you is, could the guys out there benefit from this information as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one of the things we know in running a small business is you, um, you don't build niche products, you market to the niches, right? So mm -hmm. what that means is we don't have to build something that only, you know, a certain, um, a certain type of person can use a vacuum for example lots of different people can use a vacuum busy mm -hmm. moms small businesses but what we do is we market to the niches so we create our verbiage in such a way that it cuts through the noise with one type of person sure and so yes this um this book is very much written in a way in a language that resonates most with women but the knowledge that I poured into it came from not just women but men too in fact men have been some of my biggest cheerleaders along wow. the way and um you know m mentors um, score mentors I also I uh, had SBA mentors. Um, there are people in the community who have guided me and helped open up doors I never would have walked through otherwise. And so, yes, it's written for women. Uh, I also believe that the playbook, the general business playbook out right now was written for somebody who's going to go into small business full-time. And as you know, that's not always what women do. 
we a lot of times work our businesses part-time while we also have many other roles in society. And so I wanted a book that the language spoke to that as well. And so there's a lot of cheerleading in it. There's a lot of girl, you can do this type I love of that <laughs> and encouragement. But yes, it's something that absolutely a, a male could pick up and find just as much value. Right. So um, what tips or, you know, what tips and tricks would you would you want to give a person who's just starting out in business? They don't know where to turn. They don't know what to do. What is the first step? What is the first um your, your first suggestion? Yeah, that's such a great question. So looking back on my journey, because I had so much time on my hands in the beginning and I, my book of business wasn't full, I said, I got to do something. So I forced myself to get out and to build relationships. And seven years later, at the time when I was doing it, I didn't know how valuable it was. But seven years later, I can see that that was one of my biggest keys to success was getting out, building relationships with people. And there's a question I often ask, what can I do for you? How, who can I connect you with? How can I be in your corner? How can I spread your message? What kind of clients are you looking for? And when people hear that, their guard just comes down and they realize that, you know, I'm not out for just me, just to, just to help my business or promote my offering, but I want to build a community of entrepreneurship where, as they say, a rising tide lifts all boats. And so I would recommend new entrepreneurs to surround themselves with other people. It's important to have peers. So other people who are going through the process at the same phase of business you are, if you're just starting out, surround yourself with people who are also just starting out. But then I also recommend surround yourself with people who are one, two, three steps ahead, because those people will light your path. So don't just surround yourself with people who have been there, done that, you know, they have a successful business because oftentimes what we don't see is the before it worked stage, right? So maybe you can relate in before it worked, it, there's this phase where you're trying to get everything going, you're pushing, you're shoving, you're, you know, you're doing everything in your power to get your business up and going mm -hmm. and it feels like it's not working. And I can't tell you how many female entrepreneurs have come to me and said, Francie, I'm doing all the things and it's just not working. And I tell them it is working, right? When we plant a seed in the ground we don't expect it, expect it to bloom right away, but we nurture it. We give it the right environment and we wait. And after a period of time, it grows into something beautiful. And so I think it's really easy. This would be my second tip aside from building relationships. I think it's really easy to allow imposter syndrome to set in, especially as females. Who am I to start this business? Who am I to act like I have something to teach people? I'm new here. Um, you know, what will people think about me starting on this new endeavor? And all of these thoughts about what people think creep in. And I hate it. And I also recognize that that imposter syndrome sets in most heavily in the very beginning before we've really had a chance to see the results of our business come to fruition. And so I just... I just beg new entrepreneurs, keep putting one foot in front of the other. You really have to evaluate that threshold that we, we all have a, th a threshold for discomfort, right? And when you're new in entrepreneurship, you really have to raise that threshold because you put yourself in new opportunities, uh, new situations, you introduce yourself differently than you ever have before. You have to explore some things that don't quite feel familiar yet. and that is so natural to the first stage of entrepreneurship. And so I just encourage, um, I'm going to loop back to the first point. I just encourage 
new entrepreneurs to surround themselves with other people who are doing it because that community of support will help you realize it's completely normal to feel that way. Wow. I love that because one of my struggles is, I mean, I'm, I'm still evaluating what I know and what I don't know because there are a lot, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So I'm still working through that and I'm taking notes on other things because marketing is one of my, even with, even with my authorship, with the one book I've published and I'm rebranding several others and working on some other stuff, marketing is the hardest part. It's like, I put myself out there and just nothing seems to work. So that's one of the reasons why I started this journey because I am, I am um, adding on the editing piece, but I'm also trying to market the authorship and the podcast that I already have and, that, and, and that's one of the struggles. And I'm learning so much. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things Ramon said that I absolutely loved, and I want to share it here, is you, if you sell to everybody, you sell to nobody. You got to know your audience. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. one of the things I learned. And I think you're nailing it. Um, that marketing is the engine that propels businesses. And so I think a lot of people go into entrepreneurship undervaluing how important marketing truly is and it is inescapable as an entrepreneur if this is not something that you're outsourcing you must um, dive in dig your teeth in and figure out where your your target audience is spending time online and in person and set up those channels to speak to them and so Marketing, you know, my first business evolved into a marketing business. The one that I mentioned was started as a virtual assistant business. Clients kept asking me, Francie, can, can you figure out this marketing thing? Can you figure out that marketing thing? And I said, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll read up on it and I'll give it a shot. And so eventually that business evolved into data and analytics and very marketing focused. And even still, I run a, a marketing business, I would say marketing is still a continual challenge because it's always changing. Um, people are always shifting where they gather information. And so it can be a, a struggle, but it can also be an, a fantastic challenge that entrepreneurs get to embrace and lean into and um, you know, stay up on. So I feel your pain and I know that it's, it's difficult. And from what I've learned, and um, you can tell me what your thoughts are on this, marketing is not buy my book, buy my product, buy my service. It's about making those connections, engaging with people, finding like-minded people that you, that would that you know, doing the the market research to find the demographics. Which demographics are a little bit. That's one of those those things that's a little beyond my comfort zone right now. And then the psych psychographics, but it's also just engaging with like my followers. I, I, I talk about what I'm working on and and stuff like that. And I don't mm -hmm. I don't always just throw the book out there, the editing service out there and everything. I'm still building. So it's 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 not a it's not a excuse me, it's not a sell at first, it's a get to know people. It's building mm -hmm. relationships. Yes, yes. And so I talk often about the buying cycle and this is the psychological process that customers go through as they decide to make a decision. So the first, I think of it like a funnel, okay? So the, the top of the funnel, that is the awareness. That is where people first learn about us, where they're coming to find out, get a feel for our brand, understand what we do and who we do we do it for. And it's a very general um, top down view of our business. The second phase then would be the consideration. And this is where people have heard about you. They know what you do. Perhaps some kind of trigger came along that they realized they had a need for your service or product and they're considering your offering versus your competitor's offering. So then the third phase would be the, the purchase phase. And this is where they're ready to pull a trigger on purchasing. They just need that extra little push over the edge. 
And then the fourth phase I would consider the after sale phase. So this is um, so important because these are the people who have already bought from us and we want to develop raving fans. It's easiest and least expensive to sell to people who have already bought from you. So I encourage entrepreneurs out there, don't forget about the people who have already bought from you. They've already gone through that psychological turmoil of deciding to buy. And if you did your job well, it's an easy decision for them to come back and purchase again. And so we want to lead people through this process. We think about the top of the funnel kind of being the handshake, getting to know them, building those relationships. And a lot of times that's our social media. Those are our email marketing. Um, if you're out in person, shaking hands at networking events, you know, it's, it's the top of the funnel that you're working on there. And then once you get them into your ecosystem, that's where you have, you know, you're, you're selling at that point. You're not just educating. You are more so, you know, maybe you have a sale coming up or, um, you know, something that really helps push them over the edge to decide to buy. But then after that, we're not done because we got to make sure that we follow up with the client, that they had an excellent experience. And this is also where we're developing raving fans who are telling other people about, about our offering. And not only that, just to add to that, we're also staying connected, not just in the business sector, like, okay, so following up with a product, but staying connected outside of the business world on mm -hmm. a personal level, making, no, I mean, yes, making fans, but sometimes, but I, I, and tell me what you think. And I would suggest maybe making friends with those people to stay connected. Yeah. I think our, my network, my personal network is how I launched my business. And that's how a lot of people get their momentum going in the beginning is telling your friends and family. I mean, people don't know about your business unless you go out and tell them. And the people who are in your personal network who are in your corner already, they want to see you succeed. So they are the ones that are going to go out. They're going to show up to your ribbon cutting. You know, they're going to share your social media posts. So absolutely those personal connections, I would say are important. For those of you watching and listening out there, I hope you guys are taking notes because this is some very valuable information here because if you're just starting a business like I am, you need this information. You need to build community. Community is another important uh, important component of building a business, in my opinion. Now, um, but also, if you haven't started taking notes, I encourage you to stop here. Get your pen and paper, your computer, get a Word document up or a document in the Word processor on, on, Word processor on your computer, the notes on your phone, the... Uh, um, a, a recording app or what, however you take notes, because some of my audience is visually impaired like me, um, and go back and watch this from the beginning, and then, or, and to, to catch up on what you didn't, what you missed, and then continue to take notes, because this is some very valuable information, I'm telling you, and I encourage you to get the book, Build, Dream, Grow, or Dream, Build, Grow, that's the title of the book, I encourage you to get that as well, as seeking the advice of a score mentor, because this is going to take, this is going to help you take your business to the less, next level. So, so my question, my final question here, because I know we could sit all day and talk about this, but if you had a call to action for the listeners and viewers, what would that be? Um for their own businesses or is yes. this, are you are you giving me a chance to plug in or you, <laughs> you can plug you a resource <laughs> you can challenge somebody whatever oh okay yes um well you've done a fantastic job of of talking about the book and I'm so grateful because that's my way to pass along information and to help women rewrite the script to build a life they want to wake up to, to create a business around their life and not a life around their business. But I'll also take the opportunity, if it's okay, to encourage people just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Thank just you. keep going. Just keep going. Wake up, you know, manage your time wisely. It's your most precious resource. And 
um, focus on, you know, creating an asset, focus on creating not just a paycheck for yourself, but a business that has inherent value that um, somebody could walk into and continue running without you, whether that's, you know, you're the CEO at the top and you've got a manager coming in or somebody walks in and they want to buy your business, you know, create that asset, not that paycheck and focus on that end vision of, you know, what you want your business to look like. And then each day, you know, reverse engineer that image of, of what it is, what lifestyle, what business, what you want clients to say about you, reverse engineer that and say, what can I do today to take action, to move the needle just a little bit further on my business? I absolutely love that. And thank you for that encouragement. So where can people find you online? Great question. Foundingfemalesco.com has all the information on our business. Um, The book is there. Our community is there. We have in-person events and then we do a six week start your business boot camp. So all that information is there. And then founding females co on Instagram. I'm on there as well. So since we both are women of faith and my podcast is faith-based podcast, I'm going to pose this question. If you don't feel comfortable, let me know. But what Bible verse would you like to share with us today? Oh, ooh, that's a good one. Um, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, that's okay. So Proverbs 31 has been ringing in my head because I'm a mom and I feel (laughs) this oftentimes this pull between, you know, staying home with my daughter if she doesn't want to go to school one day and continuing to build this business. And I just think about the Proverbs 31 story of this woman who builds her life and she goes out and she works hard and she serves her husband. And to me, you know, society and even, um, you know, Christian culture can group women into, um, you know, serving the home only. And I think it can be very godly to also have a business and to be serving others outside the home. So, that one has been on my heart. And if it's okay, I would love to tell you my trash truck analogy. Yes. This is my faith um, analogy. I feel so led in my business. I feel so called by God in this journey of leading women into and through entrepreneurship. And um, my trash truck analogy is that God is in the driver's seat. He is driving that truck. And where he leads us, we go. Where he turns, we go. I'm the team member on the back of the truck who jumps off at each stop. When he says stop, we stop. And so I jump off and I do the heavy lifting and I pour it, you know, push the can into the back of the truck. And then when that task is done, I jump back on the truck ready to go to the next stop. And there is so much fulfillment in being able to serve in this role and take a, you know, a back seat, so to speak, and let God do the driving. Wow. I love that. Thank you. I absolutely love that because it's up to us to do the heavy lifting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Even when, we, even when it's outside of our comfort zone. So I'm going to ask you to do one final thing. Would you like to pray us uh, to, to close us out in prayer? Pray oh. for entrepreneurs out there who are just starting their businesses, those who are building their businesses, that God will connect them with 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 those who need that leg up to help I level up their businesses. Love this. I would love this. Oh, thank you. Yes. Lord, we are so grateful for the opportunity today that the many resources that you have offered and provided for entrepreneurs to build the dream on their heart, the dream that you planted there. We are so grateful because we know that where you create a vision, where you create a purpose, you also provide the resources. And we see that over and over again. So we just glorify you. Thank you so much for Anne Lord. Thank you for her work. I pray that you'll bless her business and that you will help 
amplify her message through her podcast and her YouTube channel. Lord, thank you so much for the beautiful work that she is doing here. And I pray for each and every entrepreneur, maybe who feels on top of the world and also feels in the the depths of the valleys all in the same day, many times. I pray for their hearts and I pray for them to give it up to you, to allow you to lead and, and guide the endeavor. And Lord, finally, I just pray that we can be your hands, feet, eyes and ears here on earth to to help advance your message forward, to help um, walk in our purpose, knowing that it is a God-given purpose and that your plan is ultimately the best one. Amen. Thank you so much. And and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we challenge you today, and I'm going to do the writer's challenge, but I challenge you to go out there and read to get inspired, write something inspiring, and share your creation with the world. For when you've touched one life, you've touched thousands. Thanks for joining us on Inspirational Journeys today, folks. And remember, your story and your business matters. Have a blessed day, everyone.